the title of today's presentation is Three Keys to Unlock Your Potential. Today's webinar is sponsored by HP Software Education. Okay, my name is Richard Bishop. I'm one of the leaders of Vivit in the UK and I've been a board member of Vivit for the last four years. I'm currently the board member responsible for education, so I'm keen to hear from Joe myself, so I'm, I'm listening as well as introducing him today. In my day job, I work for a company called Trust IV Limited in Manchester in the U in UK. Um, we're an HP partner who specialises in performance testing and test management, so that makes me a day-to-day -day user of HP's products. Today's um, speaker is Joe Canata from HP Software. Joe hails from Atlanta in Georgia and manages the global HP software certification program. Joe spent 14 years creating and managing certification programs within the software industry and prior to HP he worked at Brocade. He's a frequent industry speaker on topics such as exam security, social media marketing and best practices. Okay, um, a little bit of housekeeping. Um, Today's live session is intended for all Vivit members. Um, the recording will be posted into the webinar section of the Vivit website after today's webinar, and at that point it will be visible for all members. Uh, in addition, today's slide deck and the webinar recording will be made available to you who are attending now, and we'll send you the link via email once those are posted to the Vivit website. If you have any questions as we go along through the webinar, please type them in to the uh, panel and um, we will we'll respond to those towards the end. Uh, the next slide, Joe, if you can, just has a uh, shows the webinar control panel which normally appears in the upper right hand corner of your screen. If you want to submit a question, make sure that the questions pane, um, which is the little bit arrowed down at the bottom of that screen, is expanded. Type in your question and click on send. Um, and then we'll we'll respond to it. So okay, we're we're ready to get started. I'll I'll pass over to Joe um, to to start the presentation. Thanks very much, Joe. Thank you, and uh, hello and welcome everybody. Today I'd like to talk to you about uh, three keys to unlock your potential. So here's our agenda. Uh, well, first we'll talk about three key reasons to get trained. Then uh, I'll follow that with three key reasons to get certified. Then we'll talk about three ways you can achieve some success. Uh, I'd also like to give you some new announcements uh, for the certification program uh, on software that will be happening in 2015. We've got some exciting things uh, that will be coming up shortly. And then we'll have uh, time for questions and answers. Feel free to ask anything you like. The only question I won't answer is giving away something that's a test question answer. So I can tell you B, C, D, A, B, those are all test answers, but I can't tell you which questions or which exams. So with that, let's take a look at uh, our first slide. HP Software Education has a wide offering of courses, and three reasons you really should get trained. First off, training makes you more productive. We've done studies and the industry's done studies and they found one hour of training can save five hours of lost productivity. That's a pretty big ratio. Everybody's got more to do than they have hours in the day generally, uh, especially in the IT space. So the more you can learn, the more you know, the quicker you can get things resolved and uh, get yourself up to speed. I know we'd all like to take magic pills that would just give us the knowledge overnight, but that doesn't happen. We're not there yet. Now, the more you learn, especially with best practices, you can eliminate mistakes. I mean, think back to when you first joined uh, an IT organization or first started working in the industry. Did you make any, what I would call, rookie mistakes? Did you have any situations where you said, oh, if, if only I had known then what I know now, I wouldn't have done that. I mean, I've done things like erase live files, and we've had to go to backup, I'll say backup tapes, that's how long ago it was crazy things like that, uh, reboot a live server. So the more trained you are, the less chance you're going to have for mistakes, and 
you're going to be more efficient because you'll spend your time going forward instead of backtracking. Also, uh, I should point out, you stand a better chance, especially in the software arena, of having greater implementation success. I've worked in both hardware. Uh, my prior company, Brocade, sold fiber channel switches and IP networking switches. So the hardware environment was vastly different from software. You bring a piece of hardware into a data center, a few people need to come up to speed on it, but you really don't have a lot of end users. That's not the case with software. You bring in some software, whether it be a major analytic tool like uh, HP Idle or a security tool or something simple like a new app that you're rolling out uh, for mobile devices. People have to learn how to use it and the more time they spend fumbling around, the less time uh, it gets adopted, it, well, the longer it takes to get adopted, the less of a chance people are going to use it properly. So we have another statistic here that says untrained users require six times more support than trained users. I'm sure you've all heard the old stories about people that have called support desks saying that uh, my computer doesn't work and you know, wasn't plugged in, or the foot pedal doesn't work, where they tried to put the mouse on the floor, or uh, how do I get a piece of bread out of the, uh, the the toaster? That oh, that's for disk drives. Ah, okay. Yes, I'm dating myself. Floppy disks. I know, but uh, the point is, if people don't know how to use the equipment properly, it gets abused. If it's hardware and if it's software, they get turned off. Have you ever downloaded an app and get frustrated with it because it doesn't quite work the way you thought it would or it should, when in fact it might have been? In fact, you didn't know how to use it or didn't spend a few minutes to, to read up on it. Uh, I know that's happened to, to me. So again, the more you know, the more you can apply and the happier your life will be. So that brings us to our first polling question. Yeah, the, the first polling question, this is one of five, is has training improved your software adoption time? You've got a choice of three answers, yes, no or not applicable, which uh, presumably is for those of you who uh, haven't yet undertaken any training. Yeah, please give us your honest answers. Of course, we won't know that, but we hope they're honest answers. Okay, I can see the, uh, the answers coming in. I know you can't see that yet, Joe. But uh, so far, I'm not, I don't want to. Uh, I don't want to skew the answers by saying what other people are saying. But uh, there's a significant majority in favour of, of one of those three choices. And we're talking training. I didn't say HP training in the question deliberately because uh, obviously, ideally, I'd like to see you get HP trained and have HP products. But I'm just asking the question in general. Okay, the uh, the poll the poll's closed now, and as you can, you can see the results, we've got um, as I said a significant skew towards one of the one of the three answers. Um, so 83% of people say that uh, yes, training does improve their software adoption times. Oh, great! Uh, what was that percentage again, please, Richard? 83%. Uh, 83%. Wow. Okay. Excellent. We've got 13% not applicable. So those are the people who uh, who are yet to take on some training. Okay. All right. Thank you. Now let's talk about something that's a little more closer to uh, my heart, certification. Three reasons you'd want to get certified. Validate your skills. And, and, and uh, you can leap tall org charts and single bound, uh, to borrow from Superman. Uh, skill validation is important. You might think you know how to do something when you have to sit down and take a test and actually do it, whether it's a written multiple choice exam or one of the various hands-on exams that we offer, that's a whole different story. If it was so easy to uh, do things with, without testing, you could just get a driver's license from a vending machine. And I've lived in parts of the US where I swear that's the case, where uh, the drivers look like they've gotten their license that way. But you want to validate your skills and prove that you know the material. If you don't know what you're talking about, it can impact your service levels, delay innovation. In other words, you're spending more time fixing things that shouldn't have been broken or were improperly uh, Im implemented, 
and less time for forward thinking, coming up with new projects, new ideas. And being HP certified lets you join with other professionals like yourselves. We have communities uh, where people share ideas, trade best practices. As you work your way up the certification chain uh, to get to uh, our middle tier, the ASE, you get the ability to attend some specialized webinar, web, sorry, webinars. And then if you're a master ASE, they have uh, webinars and what they call master jam sessions that are specialized uh, product training and delivery from uh, deep HP experts. There's also special, yeah, excuse me, special privileges at some of our events, uh, special events for people at that level. So there's a lot of good reasons to get certified. Hiring managers look at certifications. It's become a differentiator if you're competing against several people in the marketplace and in certain geographies in the world. You kind of need to get certified first to prove your worthiness before a company will even look at you. Whereas in other parts of the world, you can get hired and then the company will pay to train you, pay to, to support you on certification. So depending on which part of the world you're in, uh, there's different goals and different reasons. And it's also the single biggest, I'm sorry, single biggest predictor of project success. Yes, if I only learned to read, I should have taken the reading test and gotten certified on that. Uh, certifying skills uh, of IT staff members is important. IT teams will be more productive, they'll get their projects done faster, and have less hiccups along the way if they're all pulling in the same direction, uh, they're all on the same page, and they all know what they're doing. And certification is the best way to achieve that. That brings us to our second poll question. Okay, the next question is, um, has becoming HP certified, and this is specific now, so has, has becoming HP certified improved your problem solving skills? So we'd like to know if an HP certification has helped you, has made you change the way you think. Okay, yeah, nearly 60% of people have voted now. Late results still coming in from the outlying districts. <laughs> yes. So again, we want your honest opinion here, please. Okay, so there's, there's the answers. A majority of those who express an opinion say say yes. So um, I don't think you can see these screens, can you, Joe? So um, so no, twenty seven no. twenty seven percent say yes, eight percent say no, and uh, sixty five percent say this isn't applicable to them. Okay, that's good. And we have another question for you. I want to make this interactive and just not have you listen to me speaking <laughs> all the time. Has becoming HP certified? help your organization close more deals. So obviously this is oriented towards those of you in a sales capacity or have the ability to help salespeople, technical systems engineering, something like that. Or if you know your organization has closed more deals and you've got certified people, if you're a training partner, uh, I'm sorry, a par partner or uh, a training partner for that matter. Okay, Joe, a little over half have voted on that. Um, okay. And I think, and I, don't want to, uh, I don't want to tell people how people are voting in case it skews those who are still to vote, but uh, looking at it, uh, it's, it's about to finish, I think. Again, we've got about two-thirds who say that um, this question isn't applicable to them, um, sure. yeah, which, is, which is fair enough. Uh, I suppose if they aren't HP partners, then that, that's uh, likely to be the case. But 24% um, say yes, and 10% say no, um, and then 67% of the remainder say not applicable. So I, I presume that means two-thirds of the people on the call probably aren't HP partners. Or in a sales capacity Maybe. in, in their... Uh their own company. Yeah. Yes. Yep. All right. Well, that's, yeah, that's understandable. All right. Thank you, everybody, for your help on those. One more question. 
have you made any career advancements as a result of being HP certified? In other words, has certification gotten you a raise, a promotion, uh, maybe an award or recognition? So has something positive happened to your career as a result of achieving an HP certification? It seems uh, neck and neck on the yeses and noes on this one as the, uh, as the votes are coming in. Interesting. Because it could go either way. Yes, It, it yeah. depends on uh, which kind of organization in which you work, uh, uh, what policies are, or yes. if people aren't certified, uh, obviously they'd be not applicable. Okay, the votes. Uh, the votes are in. We've got um, it, it. stayed neck and neck throughout. It's uh, twenty percent yes, twenty percent no, and sixty-one percent. I know that adds up to more than a hundred percent. There's, there's mm. the QA person in me, um, yeah. <laughs> questioning that. But um, yeah, so a, a sixty-forty split between not applicable and and then yes and no, neck and neck. Well, that's interesting. That tells me we have a lot of people that aren't certified. Either they're looking to get certified, um, or just listening to the webinar for further information, but uh, that, that's good. So what are our customers and partners saying about certification? I mean, we have people in various kinds of roles that are our customers, whether they be a partner or whether they be an end user working for a company using our software. So these are actual quotes. People have said it increased our revenue by 10 times meaning getting trained and certified. The confidence I need to face other competitors in the market and promote the HP brand. I became a trusted advisor because of our knowledge. Uh, drive more sales and quota attainment and greater prestige amongst my peers. Now Richard, I understand uh, you're a partner. Do you uh, have that's anything that's you'd like to add? Yeah, definitely. Um, I, I can't. I, 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 I know my boss would be very pleased if I'd managed to increase our revenue by a factor of 10. That's not quite happened yet, but uh, the, the organization I work for uh, wasn't an HP partner, but did an awful lot of work with HP software, uh, and we felt that it was necessary to train ourselves up to, uh, to be able to promote ourselves and also to become an HP partner. So we went through the certification process last year and became a partner, and it's uh, it has definitely made a big difference. I think uh, that second comment about the confidence I need to face other competitors and the, the third one about being a trusted advisor definitely um, ring true. Um, and the other thing that it's done is it's given us as a partner recognition within HP. Um, HP People within HP UK now know who we are and uh, obviously it's helped us to build a relationship with them. So uh, I think from a partner perspective, um, you know, I can really see the value in it. And if I can ask you one polling question, did it help uh, improve your problem solving skills? I would say po possibly. Uh, I, I know that one of the things that really rung true that you were mentioning earlier is um, if you are familiar with the product, um, certification is still important. And I definitely found that. My, my background is in Loadrunner. Um, and I really thought I knew the product inside out. But what I found was I knew the bits that I used all the time. And some of the other features that um, perhaps don't get used on a day-to-day -day basis, I was, I was pretty rusty on. So going through the, uh, the training and then the certification definitely uh, uh, you know, made me more aware of more features and certainly things that I, I wasn't aware of. Um, so, so it was definitely valuable in, in that respect. Oh, well, thank you for that. Uh, I should also point out that uh, to get certified, you don't have to go through the training. We strongly recommend it. It can be an expensive proposition, and I realize that. And there is also some value to having industry or hands-on experience. If you've been working on a particular piece of software for six or seven years and have been there through multiple revisions, and you want to go get certified, we're not going to make you sit through a training class just because. You can go right to the test. However, that's not the case for everybody, so you need to evaluate where you are. But the exams are open to uh, most audiences all the time, and the Expert One website does indicate what the prerequisites are. And then again, we always advocate to maximize your chance for success, take the training, but if you've got 
truly have the functional equivalent of the training, you don't need to sit through the class. And I don't think that's a big secret, but I just thought I would reiterate that. Now, what's an HP software certification worth in the industry, specifically HP software in this case? Uh, quietly, the program has garnered a, a lot of recognition. We were in the top or the hot 18 of IT certifications uh, by Chief Information Officer, CIO Magazine for 2014. They'll be coming out with the 2015 lists pretty soon, so it'll be interesting to see if we remain there. Another resource, Tom's IT Pro, and if you've never been there, it's, the website is Tom's IT Pro without the apostrophe, dot com. It's a great resource for, for technical information and certification, whether you're looking at HP or anybody else. If you want to see how certifications stack up in the industry or uh, just learn about technical content, again, Tom's IT Pro is a good place to go. We actually had the best big data certification in 2014, and that was our HP Vertica certification. I'm going to talk a little more about big data in a moment because that's a great area for growth. We, Tom's IT Pro also voted as best enterprise architect certification. And we were in the 40 most popular networking credentials. Tech Target, which, which again, techtarget.com, another industry website with a lot of good information, uh, very much like Computer World or Information Week, if you're familiar with those periodicals and websites, or CNET. Uh, we had the top cloud uh, computing certifications. We were con people. They basically said. You should consider HP when you're looking at the top cloud certifications. And most recently, we got the Brandon Hall Excellence Award in Learning. This is kind of like uh, the Oscars for the education and certification world. The companies apply, and there are nominations made, and then uh, members of uh, the industry vote. So it's not something you just score enough points to win, you re truly have to earn it. Like I said, it's like an, an Academy Award or uh, an Emmy here in the U.S. Uh, for television. So we received uh, the Silver Award for one of the best, one of the best certif certification partner programs. So HP software certifications do have some industry value. You're not looking at just another nameless alphabet soup certificate. Uh, and actually, we're not really big on the alphabet soup. Uh, I've worked in prior companies where certifications were began with uh, the company letter, whether it be H, C, E, etc. Uh, ours uh, do hold some merit. So if you were wondering that, uh, gee, I never hear about HP, it's out there. But the people that are looking at these websites and uh, the, those in the know know about the HP certifications. So what other value does it bring? Well, I mentioned you get some uh, n uh, some benefits. You become a trusted advisor. And again, another quote, certifications gave us credibility. And I've heard that from many people over the years. As I mentioned, I worked at Brocade prior to HP. And I would hear that from a lot of people. It, it, it gave, one guy said it, it gave me street cred uh, in the IT world. Having proven that I was able to train and, and pass an exam or a series of exams, depending on the credential, showed my ability to focus, stick, stick to a project, and uh, make an achievement. <clears throat> For some partners, they are able to average 28% year-on-year revenue growth. Um, one of them said it helped me engage larger customers and sell full solutions. So they were closing more and bigger deals. So again, for those of you in the sales environment, certification is a big plus. And in certain arenas, it's kind of a requirement. If you want to do uh, some government business here in the U.S., or for instance, last uh, year or the year before, actually, it was 2012, uh, the U.S. government passed a regulation stating that people who were working on any kind of equipment, be it in the IT space, be it networking data or, or software, database, et cetera, had to be certified on that product before they were uh, allowed to continue. It was a Depart Department of Defense directive. So 
all of a sudden we had a rash of people from a lot of army bases that were working on the network saying, I'm going to get my network access cut off if I don't get certified. So that was kind of a, a forced issue by their employer, but still they wanted to make sure that the people working in the hardware and the software were skilled and not going to cause any major mistakes. So I mentioned some of the VIP support for the master ASEs. Uh, you get access to events and, and information. And it helped one person uh, at Atrium close more sales. So again, depending on what your end goal is, whether it's just to get basic skills validated or go the distance and go all the, all the way up to the master ASE, uh, that's your choice. But we, we do offer a wide variety of uh, exams and uh, training topics. Now, I found out this interesting piece of information recently. Big data is going to be hot in 2015 and going forward. According to the article, by 2015, 4.4 million IT jobs globally are going to be created to support big data. Now, big data is kind of one of those voluminous terms. It means many things to many people. You could work in the security space and still use big data. Uh, doing an analysis of all kinds of uh, network traffic. So a lot of products like Vertica and uh, uh, ArcSight or Fortify at, at, uh, here at HP will work in tandem with one another. So uh, there, there's some crossover. And there's going to be a shortfall of big data experts. And you can see the numbers there by the year 2018. So if, if you're looking to make a career switch or you're looking to specialize, Big data is going to be one of those places where there is going to be a lot of opportunity. And look at the predicted 2015 salary range. Now, this is in US dollars, and it's up 9.3% from 2014. I'm not saying if you get a big data certification from HP, you automatically are going to make a number in that range. But those that have the skills will be in high demand. It's like back in 1997 and 98 when MCSEs were in high demand and then all of a sudden the market got flooded. And there was a point when CCIEs in the Cisco space were in high demand and the market got flooded as well. So if you want to get in on the big data scoop, uh, I suggest starting early, get the skills, become an expert. And we've got classes that cover a wide range of products and there's also certifications. So there's Data Protector, Idle, our Records Manager product, Extreme, and the Vertica Analytics platform. So this is a screenshot from the HP software website, and I'll give you a URL at the end of the presentation where you can go to uh, find out more information. But we have web-based cl web classes as well as virtual instructor-led or instructor-led. So if you can't travel or choose not to, you can take a class virtually, like you're taking the seminar virtually, or we do have self-paced. But we, we've got a mixture for each, so there's, there's not one of each type of class for every product, but you can take a look at what the offerings are. So I would say if you're looking to make a career move, take a serious look at big data. So some other ways to success, if it's not in big data, Connect with other users. Find out what they're doing. You're part of a kindred community as an IT person. You understand each other's problems, needs, uh, goals, and some of the, the headaches that you face. So you can trade skills, so to, so to speak, with other people or best practices, prove your value, and network with other people. It gives you the opportunity to learn more. I mean, how many, well, obviously, I'm not, it's not a poll question, but I'm sure uh, many of you have gone to conferences or events and met people and left uh, having networked with other folks, picking up a few business cards or contacts, and uh, getting the opportunity to grow professionally. Now, we also, HP Education uh, also has a product called the Adoption Readiness Tool, nicknamed ART. Basically, ART is a delivery platform that allows you to, as a company, you buy it, you 
buy licenses for it by named users. So let's say you start out with 50 licenses. You can train 50 people. So you can purchase art and it can come preloaded with HP training in there or you can build your own training or you can modify the training to specifically meet your needs. So if you want to see screenshots that show your company logo and colors, you can do that with art. Uh, it can be a document management system. We have one customer that's using it purely for documentation. So they're not doing any training on art. They're just using it as a platform to deliver documentation to people when they need it, kind of like an electronic library. What we've found is that people that have used art and gotten their staff, gotten their users, well, got their staff up to speed, but gotten the users up to speed have had much more success with software rollouts. Because if the users push back, if the users don't know what they're doing, all it does is flood the support desk, makes IT look bad, uh, all kinds of fingers get pointed. So using art can roll out just-in-time training because people can take these online classes whenever they need them. Uh, think about it. How many times have any of you on this call gone to YouTube to look up how to find out how to do something, whether it be a task like fix a drain or maybe if you wanted to try automotive repair. There's a YouTube video for everything. The problem is you don't know how reliable the source is. I mean, some sources may be credible, they may not. I definitely wouldn't be going to YouTube to learn how, uh, learn how to do home surgery or something like that. So, and that's not to discredit YouTube. I mean, it's, it's a public posting place. With art, you put the content out there, you'll know it's reliable, whether you buy it from HP or build your own. So 38% of successful software pilots need re-architecting before launch due to missed software upgrades. So if you want to be in the successful category, you definitely want to have your users trained. The better trained users will adopt the, the software faster and you have a much quicker implementation. You don't have any lag problems, excessive support calls. You want to keep the users happy. That brings us to our next poll question. Has okay. HP? Oh, sorry, sorry, Joe. Oh, um, I'll read it if you like. And give you a give you a sure. rest. <laughs> sure. uh, okay. The next poll question is: Has HP certification helped you improve your software implementations? Uh, it looks like the poll has disappeared from the screen. Just. Uh, Okay, let's look into that. Again. Sorry about that. It just uh, closed on me here. Ah, okay. I'm not sure I'm even going to be able to launch it again. Just give me a few minutes okay. if we can come back. That, that's okay, Stephanie. I, I found the air button, so uh, I've okay. just done that. Okay, there we are. So uh, just to remind you, it's has HP certification helped you improve your software implementations? So this is... Uh, uh, by implementations, I presume you mean quality as well as potentially time to market. Right. Do right. you? Do? Yeah. Okay. Right. Yeah. The, the whole project. Has the project been more successful or has it been a nightmare? Okay. I think that uh, there was because of the problem with that, it looks like the, the poll may actually have closed before anybody got the chance to vote. It says uh, attendees are viewing poll results. So. Uh, I'm not sure whether we're able to go back to restart that. Stephanie, do you know if that's possible? Yes. Give me a minute to try to reload it if you would like to continue on, and I'll message you when I get this going again. Okay. Or, 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 or just jump in. No, no problem. Okay. Just, please okay. jump in when, when you have it ready. You got it. Okay. I'm working hard right. here. I'll be right back. While you're doing that, I'll talk about what's coming this year in the HP Software Certification 2015. One of our first initiatives uh, is, and this is applicable to the U.S. only, so I apologize to our global audience, but we're getting the HP software certifications on the GI Bill. What this means is people who are veterans of service uh, in the military are eligible for reimbursement for training and certification under the GI Bill. And there are many institutions, academic and uh, technical that are on this list. 
HP has two existing certifications on there now, and they're both Unix oriented. So I'm looking to get a complete cross section of our software certifications on this list. So if you're a veteran, you can get trained and get certified up to whatever the dollar limits are. If, they, if you fail the exam, they will pay for you to retake it and get reimbursement. So when this is in place, uh, we will make all kinds of announcements about it. It's a lengthy process. We have to fill out a lot of paperwork. Of course, it's the government, so they would expect that, and we expect it. And then has to go through uh, approval and implementation on their side. The last company where I worked, it took about nine months, and that was just for nine exams. So in this case, we've got about uh, 30 exams that we're getting on the list. Uh, another thing we're doing is, uh, and we've had people tell us this, and I just thought it was something we should do in general, is award CPEs for courses. Now, if you're not familiar with what a CPE is, it's basically like a continuing education credit. Technically, it's called continuing professional education. So across our courses, we'll be assigning CPE values. So if you take a three-day course, for instance, that would be 24 CPEs. If you take a one-hour web-based course, uh, that would be one CPE. So we will have this in place in uh, probably by April. And if you enroll, let's say, in an, in an instructor-led or a virtual instructor-led, on the certificate itself, it will tell, tell you how many CPEs you've been awarded. And, uh, or, or, I'm sorry, web-based class two. Your completion certificate will tell you how many CPEs you've been awarded, and you can self-report. So for some in the industry, uh, maintaining the CPEs is a requirement to maintain certain certifications and certain distinctions uh, external to HP. In this case, for instance, we're showing you the ISC squared, which is in the security arena, but uh, we'll also be awarding CPEs for our IT management, big data marketing optimization, and security courses. Thanks, Joe. So, so is that a way you can keep your certification current um, regardless of certification? Are you trying to roll that out across your portfolio of certification? Yes. Uh, yeah. They, they don't pertain to the HP certifications. They pertain to, let's say, industry standards. Uh, I I, if you're in the legal profession, you've got to maintain, or, or a CPA, a chartered accountant, certified public accountant, you've got to maintain so many continuing education credits to show you're on top of the latest laws. I see. Uh, just like in, in the medical profession, doctors need to be retrained and uh, uh, need to read journals and stay up on, on the latest practices. Okay. Um, one, one thing to note, Joe, uh, the, uh, the the last survey question is is ready again. So uh, should, we, okay. should we do that now? Yeah, let's do that now. Sure. Yeah. So okay. I'm going to roll back the slide here. So again, we'd like to know if uh, HP certification, specifically HP certification, has helped you improve any of your HP software implementations. Okay. I can or see the answers coming in as well, so that's uh, that's good. Great, great. I won't give too much away, but you'll be pleased to know they're they're going in your favour. <laughs> <laughs> good, good, good to hear. I think it's the, uh, the the type of study that you have to do means that you. Uh, you don't go down those those blind alleys quite so often when you when you've done it before and had some practice. Correct. Exactly. Yeah, you're not saying let's push this button and see what it does. That's dangerous <laughs> yeah. in the IT world. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, so uh, the re the results are in, and it's 23% uh, yes and 13% no, and and again a, a large chunk of of not applicable, but uh, of, of those who. Uh, said that HP certifications made a difference, the, the, the majority were obviously favor, in, in favor of that certification. Well, great. That's good to hear. And again, we haven't uh, seated the audience with all HP people from uh, software education. <laughs> <laughs> Something new that we're, we're introducing this year I'm very excited about, and this will be rolling out sometime in March, is a new form of gamification. If, if you're not familiar with gamification, don't confuse it with playing games. That's something different. Uh, we're going to be rolling out a hub 
uh, for HP Software Education and Certification, where we will invite people to participate. And when you get on this hub, you'll be given a series of challenges or tasks. And each task has an associated point value with it. So one task, for instance, might be to view an infographic, or to look at a video, or to attend a training class. Uh, the, the longer the task, or the larger the task, the more points you're awarded. What do you get for these points? Well, if you can think of a, an airline frequent flyer program or a hotel loyalty program, it works the same. The points can be exchanged for things like gift cards, uh, merchandise, HP branded merchandise, uh, looking at some of the existing hubs that we have within HP now, one of them is offering a free pass to Discover. That takes 80,000 points. But you would get a free pass to the next HP Discover. Uh, some of the other top tier prizes that they're awarding are 15 minute phone calls with some of our top executives. Uh, one of them, when they introduced their hub, actually had a 15 minute call with Meg Whitman. If that's something that would be of interest to you, uh, you can accrue points. So these challenges that we'll be putting out there will be not just bombarding you with marketing literature. There'll be some fun things, too. There's brain teasers. For instance, uh, there was one I saw that said, uh, what is the missing line from this holiday song? And nobody else can see your answers, so you can't cheat off the person next to you. But So it'll be a mixture of fun things. And there'll be a leaderboard that will be displayed on the left-hand side, so you'll see how you, you rank against everybody else. There'll be a top 10 list. And then there are also badges you can uh, get when you're inside. So for instance, if you've completed 25 challenges, you could get a badge. Or if you've achieved the 10,000 point level, you, you could get a badge. And then there's four levels uh, you can achieve. So the goal would be to try to make it up to the top level if possible. So this will be available very soon. And again, it's something you can visit once a week if you want, do a couple of challenges, move on. Not something that would take a lot of time. Uh, one, one of the other challenges that was interesting was built around HP Discover. It said, try to find someone else who's also a member of this uh, group and make a connection. When you do, you both get points. Or if you refer somebody to the group, you get points. So there'll be all kinds of interesting things available to you that'll be fun, not just, again, uh, propaganda being floated your way. Uh, we want to make it two-way. So we'll be launching that sometime in March. <clears throat> Watch for that. We also got approval uh, last week, actually, to begin a dedicated Facebook page and LinkedIn group just for HP software education and certification. Now, when I was at Brocade, one of the things I spent a lot of time on, actually as far back as 2009, 2010, when social media was just starting to catch on, was to build the page. And basically, I wanted it to be a fun place. I, I viewed it as being the producer of a television variety show, where I had to provide interesting content, uh, guests, fun things, a little bit of comedy, a little bit of seriousness. Uh, never any music, but, uh, but, but the point was, we, we do interesting things. And I plan to do that on the HP pages as well. We, we put out little things like, for instance, uh, interesting pictures of license plates. I found a car that had a license plate that said MS-DOS, or another one that said HTTP. And uh, we'd post those up there for comments. We also had little challenges, like uh, I had a picture of a port. Uh, it happened to be here in Georgia. But I said, how many networking terms can you see in this picture? For instance, there was a bridge going across the river. So I said, I'll give you an easy one, bridge. And then we had people trying to come up with long lists. So we'll have some fun, interactive ways. And also, it's a way for you to give us feedback directly. Because I took what was said by the, the, the group members in LinkedIn and Facebook very seriously. I, I really would look for feedback and ways to improve the program and to put a personal touch on it. I didn't mind that my name and face were out there for people to either throw darts at or just to, to look at and say, OK, we know who's running the program. But I really want to hear what you have to say. Uh, I hate it when, <clears throat> excuse me, I hate it when I have to clear my throat, but I also hate it when people uh, 
look at an organization like this big monolith behind a concrete barrier with electrified fences and alligators in the moat. I want to keep the program open uh, and honest and hear what, what you have to say, both for education and certification. And then we will try to implement whatever changes we can. So we want to make it your program. So we're very excited about these social media channels. And also we're going to link them into the uh, the new hub I was talking about. So one of the challenges might be go and like the Facebook page or one of the Facebook uh, requests might be go over to the, uh, the hub and uh, become a member and earn some points for that. So it should be very interesting uh, as we go along. So in closing, I'd like to say, as you can read, empower your success through education and certification. Our goal is to help you maximize the value of your HP software and to help you improve as a person. Improve your skill set and do your best to get the most out of the software. With that, we'll turn it over to any questions that you may have. We've got lots of time for questions and uh, I'll be happy to answer what I can. I'm glad we've got lots of time, Joe, because uh, we've, we've got plenty of questions. So. Um... So yeah, the the, uh, the first one I'll, I'll do it in reverse order because it's the one you've just been uh, talking about. Um, it's uh, where can we find more information on the gamification for software education and certification? Okay, right now you, there's no place you can find that because it hasn't been implemented yet. When it is implemented, uh, ooh, yes. Uh, how do we announce it if we don't have a place to announce it yet? Uh, we will probably send out an email blast and set up some sort of uh, awareness campaign to let you know. You can um, always... Yep, go ahead. Hi Joe. hi Joe, it's Lucy here. I'm um, just thinking about that. We can actually definitely post something on the Vivit site so that it's really accessible oh, for all okay, of the Vivit great. members to have a direct link into that. So I think when we launch it, we'll make it really obvious for, um, for the Vivit guys so that you can actually hook into us. Terrific. And, yeah, and, and we can we can tweet um, or, or put put it on our Facebook page as well. So that's uh, that's other ways that we can promote it. So we'll do that. Excellent. And uh, I'll put a blog out uh, as well, announcing it and uh, making you aware of when it's live. So I hope that answered the question. Yeah, it, it probably answers the other one, the next one as well, which is how do you get invited. So, uh, yeah, if you do a blog article and we mention it on Vivit's social media channels as well as yours, then uh, people should find about it, find out about it that way. Great. Um, well, it sounds, sounds like there's some public interest already for it, so that's yeah. good. Yeah, well, I, I used to, there used to be a, a gamification aspect to the Mercury user group which um, on, on their website, and it was really popular. So, uh, so it's, it's a good way of getting people to, uh, to, to talk to each other, so I think that's good. Um, there, is, there is one other question, which is, are AIS and ASE certifications gained for life? Oh, good question. Uh, actually, the, the, the question applies to not only AIS, but ATP, ASE, and MASE. HP's policy is, especially with software, things get old fast. So after about four years, they lose their value, and we recommend recertification. Now, if you're a partner, there are partner requirements for recertification, and it will depend on which software pillar uh, where you're a partner. So there, there's multiple answers to that question. But after four years, we recommend recertification because you're out of date. I mean, I could tell you I'm a Microsoft certified systems engineer, and I really am. And you go, oh, wow, that sounds neat, interesting. And then I tell you it's on NT40, and now I hear the sound of air rushing out of a balloon. So you want to be on, you want to be certified on at least something that's close to current or relatively new and not the 2000 or 2001 version of the software. Yeah, it's funny you should say that, Joe. But I've also got an NT4 Microsoft certification, so we must be we must be of a similar age. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Okay. Um, another question is: Are Internet brain dumps good study tools? I suppose that gets back to the: um, do, you, do you just sit the exam, or do you do the certification? So uh, I suppose it leads on to that. Oh, that one touches on a nerve. That's a good question. 
When I was at Brocade, I first encountered this in certification. Uh, our program was not huge. It took time to grow over the 14 years I was there. And when we got to 2007 and we got above the radar and got noticed, we started seeing brain dumps. Now, what brain dumps are, basically, is somebody stealing the intellectual property of the company. So whether it's IBM, Cisco, Microsoft, CompTIA, HP, EMC, if you see these brain dumps, somebody has actually gone and swiped the questions and possibly the answers, not always the case, and published it. They sell them for money. I've actually had, since I've come here to work at HP, people complain that the brain dump didn't help them prepare for the test. And I said, number one, when you sign up to take an exam at HP, you sign a candidate agreement that says you will use basically only HP authorized study tools and you won't be going to the dark side and looking for cliff notes or cheat sites and things like that. So the people that came forward actually were at risk of losing all of their credentials. Uh, I just let them know that and oddly enough the complaint kind of just disappeared. But the point is using brain dumps, they're not guaranteed. First of all, it's a shortcut and you're only fooling yourself. You pass the test, you get certified, maybe with the brain dump, great. But then when it comes time to actually put your skills to use, uh, you fall flat. Also, we have countermeasures that I won't go into, built into the exams and with the brain dumps such that you can't rely on them. You can buy them, but they may or may not be useful. They may say the answer is one thing, and in fact, it's another. So uh, HP has a real good group. Uh, I don't manage that like I did at my former company, but I've worked with them and advised them because exam security is, is a hot button of mine uh, it, because it's all about integrity. What good is buying a college diploma or a university diploma if you walk in with uh, an education in ninth grade or in, let's say 10 years of school, it's going to show real fast. So I'd recommend stay away from them. It's only going to get you into trouble. And we'll know about it and you could end up losing your credentials, which could be very embarrassing, uh, especially if you're a training partner, uh, I'm sorry, if you're a partner training partner and you lose your credibility in front of your students or if you're an end user. So try to avoid that. Okay, thanks for that. There's, uh, there's another one which is in a way related where someone's asking, uh, they say they're experienced and they want to know if they can just take an exam without attending the recommended training. I know you touched on that briefly but it might be good to expand on that now if you can. Yeah, uh, I'll mention that again. Definitely. If you've got equivalent experience on a product there's no need to go through the training. Now, we run into situations in software where revisions come out quite quickly at times. And if a new revision comes out and a new version of the exam comes out, maybe because of your background, you can just read the release notes and see what's different and go in and take the test if you want to recertify and pass it without having to sit through training or even sit through a differences class. So yes, it can be done. But if you're attempting something for the first time or you're coming in new, we suggest you go the, get all the knowledge and hands-on practice that you can. And the best way to do that is to take a training class. One thing we're not short on is hands-on practice time. Okay, that's good. Thank you. And, and I suppose the, uh, the the raft of free software and the fact that you can download trial versions of, of most versions of software means that you've got the opportunity to try that, um, you know, in your own labs. Um, okay. The the um, another question is what type of exams are offered by HP Software in your certifications? I'm not quite sure what uh, what's meant by oh, that. Oh, okay. I, that I think sense? I know what I think I know what they mean. And I should also add that the I mentioned the art tool earlier that has a free demo download as well. So uh, something to visit. Uh, the types of exams that we offer are proctored at a Pearson View Testing Center, and those would be multiple choice exams. Typically, they'll have uh, 55 to 70 questions on them and last about an hour and a half. Some of the exams that we have are translated or localized 
into languages like Korean, Japanese, uh, Spanish. Not all exams. Uh, you, when you look at the exam, you can find out. We have web-based exams so that you can unproctored that you can take wherever you want. And again, you enroll through Pearson View, and you can take that exam at your convenience. You're given a certain window of opportunity to take the test. So you can't enroll for it tomorrow and then take it in April or something like that. It has to be completed by a certain, in a certain amount of time. And then the third type of exam we have is what we call the hands-on or practicum. Depending on the software pillar, these exams can either be taken independently or in the case of, let's say, our security software, it's bundled in as part of the class. So we might have three days of training, and then the fourth day following with the same group will be a hands-on exam based on uh, whatever the topics of the class were. So it'll give you a chance to prove your, your skills based on what you just learned in the same lab environment where you were taking the training class. So those are the different types of exams we have. Multiple choice question and hands-on, and then two delivery methods uh, at Pearson View Centers, proctored, web-based unproctored, and of course the practicums are, are proctored as well. Okay, there's, there's uh, one more question which says, uh, how do I get information about the certification program and exams uh, and get started? All right, well, one good place to start is to go to this website, uh, hp.com slash go slash software education, or on the HP website, go up to the top bar, uh, or I'm sorry, you can scroll down to the bottom of hp.com, and there's a training and certification link in the lower right-hand corner, and that will take you to the Expert One pro pages. Expert One is the name of HP's program, of which software is a part. We also have certifications as a company on servers, bladed products, uh, storage devices, printers. So HP as a company has a very diverse product set, as I'm sure you're all aware, and software is just one part. So from the Expert One website, you can actually go out excuse me, and filter by just software certifications and see the complete list. You can also download a list of the learning paths which basically say if you want to get uh, a big data certification on the IDLE product, it will show you the class and the exams that you have to take. And one thing HP has mandated is that every certification be supported by a class. So we're not going to test you on uh, stuff, which could be somebody's opinion, some vague article somewhere, or uh, something buried in a piece of documentation. Each of the exams has to have a class to support it. Now, again, you don't have to take the class, but the exams uh, do have to have some sort of training to support them. All right, do we have any other questions? Thanks for that. No, I think that more or less wraps it up. I think a lot of the questions, other questions that have come in have already been answered or were, were covered by others. There was one, for example, asking whether the training is uh, meant for HP Service Manager or all products, and I, I think you, you pretty much covered um, that, that obviously most yes. of your products are covered. And I could add to that, not just uh, all products, but different job roles as well. So depending on whether you're going to be an administrator, manager, uh, we've got certifications and training classes tailored to the different roles as well. Okay, and I think other questions that came in were people asking whether they could have a copy of the webinar or, or, or send a copy of the webinar to their uh, partner, um, so that's business partner I presume, and um, and the responses have, have gone out to those people directly saying yes, there'll be a recording, um, and that, that is the case as well as the recording that's online, we'll, so you'll get an email uh, for attending, uh, thanking you for that and, uh, and, and making you aware of the fact that the, the webinar is available for download. Which, uh, which, which pretty much brings us to the end. Uh, all that re really remains is to say thank you for attending. Um, uh, if you complete the, um, uh, sorry, th thank you for attending to th today's webinar. Um, if you complete the survey after the webinar ends and opt in to receive more information from HP, um, you, you'll be entered into a draw to win Amazon gift vouchers. Uh, as you can see from the information on the screen, there are five vouchers up for grabs, and the, the good news is by attending, you're already 
in the draw for uh, for that and to increase your chances of winning if you, you you can fill out the survey and if you do that we'd be very grateful um, and as I was saying the, the webinar recording and slide deck will be posted on the Vivid website and you'll receive an email over the next few days with uh, with with links to that so thank you very much thanks very much Joe um, I think that pretty much wraps it up yes thank you everybody for your time and attention and uh, we look forward to seeing you in the future at uh, another Vivid webinar and in one of our training classes or sitting for one of our exams.